Hey guys, I thought I'd make a video because I rewound my uh, my favorite onion, and it's a dual core FT 140-43 core, and I used the cores from Amadon Associates. I'll put a link in the description box. Um, I prefer Amadon because of the nicely now I'm going to pick this up and I'm trying to work behind a phone camera it's not going to be easy for me I'm not good at this but the edges of the cores are really nicely radiused they're chamfered and uh, very kind to the insulation on your wire so I decided to do an experiment and I'll show you the math I'll show you why in a minute but I, my experiment is to, let me orient this thing. My experiment is to use a two-tap primary rather than a three-tap. And you'll see why in a little bit. Um, I haven't had good results with two-tap primaries unless using a big core with a high AL value which means you get a lot of inductance per turn. That's what the AL value means. The higher the AL value, the more inductance per turn you get, which in turn reduces the number of turns. So, um, yeah, so we're going to do an experiment with a uh, two-turn primary. And the nice thing about that is it greatly reduces the number of turns that you need on a smaller core like this. But uh, I'm going to pause you and show you a piece of paper. Hang on. Okay, this shows the number of secondary turns over here and the Z ratio that you get over here. And you can see for the 81 to 1 Z ratio, with a two-turn primary, you only need 18 turns for the secondary, as opposed to 27 turns for a uh, three-turn primary. I measured the wire sizes, and you can see here that um, the last time with a three-turn primary using that... Uh, wire, leftover wire from uh, fluorescent ballast transformers here. I measured the actual wire gauge and it came out to about 17 gauge. I have a feeling it's really 18. Um, the overall diameter of that last wire, that ballast wire, was just slightly smaller than the wire I used this time, which surprised me because if you look up here, you'll see that the wire I used this time was considerably heavier so that means the insulation was thinner so having said that I'm gonna pause you again and uh, boy I, you know what I've been really really nervous about making this video I am right now and I really considered not making it I don't know well there will be value in it if this uh, transformer works out well for me I'll share the results but uh, I'm oh man I'm so nervous when I make a video because the quality is so rotten and uh, I'm I'm uh, socially challenged and it's part of the reason why I started doing this as a challenge to myself as a growth um, tool so I want to point out a couple things well before we get into it Oh, here we go. <laughs> I'm going to pause you because my friend Brian has a message for you. Hang on. He helped me decide. Hang on. So I decided to do the video. I'll let Brian know. And he has a message for all you good subs out there. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Uh, a little inspiration. Ballroom Blitz by Sweet. Uh, 
That's right. Okay. Enough of that. Hang on. Okay. Having got that out of the way, our inspirational video uh, music, uh, I want to show you the wire I used this time. It's uh, got two conductors. It's got a black wire and a red wire. It's got this thin metal conductor, a ground if you will, of sorts, which surrounds this foil. Okay? It's got this little nylon or whatever fiber in it for strength, I assume. But here's how I test this wire. It felt very silicone-y to me. It felt either silicone-y or Teflon-y, right? Either one is greatly resistant to heat. And uh, to see if it's suitable wire, I just take a lighter to it. Watch this. I cook it. For a minute I give it a good cooking like this and look what I'm doing back and forth I cooked that wire right you can see the black charring but look it it did not melt that insulation did not melt and I cooked it okay so and this is what the wire looks like it's stranded I twisted the end together I don't know how many strands it doesn't matter but uh, that's the wire I used. Uh, nice wire, man. This stuff here that I took it out of, the jacket's loose. Like, you can squish it. Um, don't know what it's for. Don't know where I got it. Okay, I want to show you a couple things on this onion. I'll try to keep things in focus. I'll try to keep it uh, visible while I sit behind this camera and tripod. So you can see this is the shared common lead for the primary and secondary. These two black turns are the two primary turns. And the secondary also starts here, of course. And I started with red. And you can see there's one, two, three, four. And that fourth turn comes out as a tap. Then I started with a different color. I just like to alternate. It doesn't matter. But what it helps me do is it helps me count the turns. So after turn four, I know i got to add two more turns, right? So I switch to black, and there's my two black turns. I switch to red, there's my two red turns. And I, on and around I go. And my last stun on fail, the reason I dissected it was because it failed. Okay? And what happened was this 81 to 1 Z secondary tap, which is incredibly high voltage, and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, when I'm done looking at the uh, on and I'll show you my spreadsheets that I use to calculate that. And if anyone wants a copy, you're welcome to them. Um... Things are a little bit uh, off kilter here. Um, so, and I found that what I had done was I had overlapped. I was experimenting on that core with overlapping turns. And the voltage differential between turns at the 100 watt level is 67 volts. So, you know, you can overlap a turn because 67 volts is not going to break through that insulation. The problem I ran into was this 81 to 1 Z ratio tap, over, I overlapped it over this ground pair. And uh, you've got kilovolts on this line, and that was enough to break through, to arc through to the ground leads. <laughs> So I'll try to zoom in. I'm going to point here. You can see a gap there between the high ratio, the 81 to 1 tap, and the ground bundle. That's a fair gap, um, about an eighth of an inch. So that eighth of an inch gap combined with the insulation of the ground bundle and that 81 to 1 tap, the combination should be enough. And what I might do... I might even put a little bit of uh, polystyrene model cement 
between the two. Polystyrene is a, a shockingly good insulator. It's used as Q-dope on coils and such. Um, uh, or silicone RTV, also a very good insulator. Um, yeah, so that's my on -un. Um The only thing left to do is strip these wires and solder them up to make the taps, right? Um, in the past, I would have cut these. I put these zip ties on just to hold things in place while I wound it. In the past, I'd have cut them off one at a time and stripped them so I could strip down nice and close. Then I'd solder them. Then I'd put so, a little piece of uh, heat shrink tubing on them. I don't think I'm going to do that this time. I'm going to leave the zip ties. And it doesn't matter how long this lead is. It could be this long for your tap. It doesn't matter at all. It could be an eighth inch long or eight inches long. <laughs> That's exaggerating things, but you know what I mean. Anyway, I think I'll... I'll, I'll bend these apart and strip as close to this uh, zip tie as I can, but it'll probably end up being stripped about there. And I'll just twist them up and solder them, call it a day. Um, is it going to be as pretty? Uh, beauty's in the eyes of the beholder. And every un and I wind is a, a beautiful thing, man. Oh, it's more beautiful than Monica and my cigars. Um... So that's my on -un, and I'll bring you back, and uh, with some results. I'm very anxious to get this thing soldered up and start testing it. I'm really also curious what will be the self-resonant frequency with two taps. With three taps, it's generally about 11.5 megahertz. Um, but we'll see. Hang on a second. Uh... You want to see something embarrassing is the perfect outro to this Unun Notes video. Sorry about the bump. You want to see something embarrassing? You want to see my alter ego, if I could sing? <laughs> this is embarrassing. Hang on, and then we'll see 73. Check my man Brian out. Watch him go. I wish I could sing like this. <laughs> and you want to see who else I could I wish I could sing by hang on okay man check him out watch the drummer go <laughs> I hope you're well um I really do hope you're well. Hang on. From our good friend Al, who watches us wisely from over top my monitor. He keeps it real, man. We're getting tilty again. I wish you all a very good, healthy, and prosperous, and joyful 2021. We all deserve that. We're all human beings. Love one another. Treat one another with respect and dignity and kindness and generosity. Get to know your neighbors, for they're the ones that count the most, other than your family and any of God's creatures in your family's home. I wish you these things from me, Chuck, and a couple of my friends, <laughs> Wirehead and Blozo the Humble Ham. Happy New Year, guys. 73.